Richard, down here at Nike Free. Um, yeah. It's great to see you. Um, yeah. First of all, congratulations on European Indoor World Champion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how was the race? The race was... I went into it very, very confident from the semi-final, to be honest with you. In the semi-final, I ran 6.53, easing down 25 metres from the line and shutting my arms down. So after that, I think I think that destroyed a lot of my competitors' confidence. So I knew going into it, it would take something, a rapid change round for someone to, to beat me in that final. So if you looked on the start line, I was very, very confident, laid back. And, I was fully, fully confident in my ability that I could go and take it. And in the end, I won by quite a distance over 60 metres. My start wasn't as great, but the back 30, I, I really started to pull away, which looks promising for the 100. And I took a lot of confidence and a lot of faith out of that, especially the fact that I can go to a major championships and perform under a, a different set of circumstances. 2014, I won it as the underdog with no pressure on me. 2015, I went and won the Europeans with a lot of pressure on me, a lot of expectation. And I've, Managed to handle both type of situations and deliver gold medal, gold medal winning performances from both. Well, that must set you up very well in 2015, and I say to have gone through both different yeah. circumstances. Yeah, yes, I think mentally, anything which is shot at me, I can, I can win races with under different circumstances either way. So mentally, I think I'm as, I'm as strong as they can come, and now it's just about getting in the physical shape, which I am in at the moment. It's just about getting even fitter, stronger, faster, going into the outdoor season and channeling that towards 100 and 200 metres. Sure, sure. And I say, uh, the goal for this year, obviously you're off to Beijing? Yeah, that's going to be the main the main goal, Beijing. If I can go there and run a big PB, the aims this year are to, to win medals and to run a sub-10, that would be absolutely amazing. That would be a great platform to build on for 2016, to again, to go out there and challenge for medals. So it's a massive three years ahead of me. And, probably the biggest three years of my flex career lying ahead so it's very very exciting and challenging at the same time but quite exciting. I mean uh, you're, you're, you're relatively young, yeah. you've been through a lot already, yeah. I mean you know the, of the, yeah. talked about a lot the 2012 non-selection. Yeah 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 uh, well 2012 was the first year that I probably broke through and showed potential to make the team before that I was living in the North East and wasn't training with a proper training group so it was pretty difficult for me to break through. I, I was injured a lot over my junior years even though I was one of the best juniors in Europe and then 2016 I started to run some really quick times but got injured at the wrong time and didn't get selected and then 2014 I broke through massively so it's kind of only been my second year training as a full time athlete where I've had the funds and support to do so so relatively young in terms of you know, my years of being a full-time athlete, so I think there's a lot more to come. A lot more to come, that yeah. sounds great, that sounds yeah. great. Yeah. And you're, you're training with Linford Christie? Yeah, I am, it's been great, He's, I had a lot, I've been working, I was training with him in 2012, and I, I linked back up with him in January, I'd done the full winter by myself again, got myself in a great shape, I've always learned from Linford sessions, I've, I've, I've done a lot of Linford's training programmes, even when I haven't been with him from 2011 onwards when I first linked up to Linford and his confidence just rubs off me massively. Having a man like that in your corner, you can't really have no one better. He's been there, done it, he knows everything that goes on physically and mentally going into big competitions. So to have him there, it's, I couldn't think of a better mentor going into big championships. So I, I learn a lot from him. Sure, and you say you're looking to break sub 10 on the 100 metres. Is, yeah. is the training different now? Is it a different approach? It was from last year, because last year I went with a new coach and it was very technical and that helped me, especially in the indoors, but going into the outdoors, I didn't. the training programme wasn't vigorous enough for me to have the physical ability to do it. So technically I improved massively and for the short term, indoors it worked, but then as the months went on into the summer, I lost a bit of strength, I lost muscle, I lost endurance, whereas with Linford's programme it's, it's pretty brutal to be honest with you, so the one thing you haven't got to worry about is that you're not going to be in the physical shape because every single one of his athletes, they're all fit, they're all strong and that's the last thing I'm going to have to worry about, so I know I'll be in the physical shape to perform as long as I stay injury free, which I've got a great support team around me, and then with the technical you know, factors that have come into it, I've, my technique slightly changed now, if I put the two together and under good circumstances and a good race, I think I can deliver some really fast times this year over the 100 and the 200. 
obviously Limper's a, a real icon in the sport. Yeah. I mean, yeah. coming from Gateshead, you know, there's, yeah. we said in the, the, the interview just before that there's obviously lots of famous runners that come from yeah, Gateshead, yeah. but not too many sprinters. Yeah, and how, yeah. how did you get into athletics? I got into it, I was just really quick as a kid at school. I used to play football, I used to do boxing, I used to do every sport, and I used to just think running was something what I just used to think, oh, I'm just fast to help me play football better. I didn't really realise that you could actually be a professional athlete and then I watched the Sydney Olympic Games and I've seen people like Michael Johnson, Maurice Green and I was just absolutely starstruck and then I thought that's what I want to do, I want to be like those guys and then I won all my sports days, the county sports days and then my dad persuaded me to go down the local athletics track and it just started from there and I just started winning races and races and that's where it all started from there and then I won my first English schools in 2005, 2006 and that's when I realised I had the ability to probably make something of it and that's where the journey started. And, and obviously that journey's not been as smooth as you said, I mean no. there was times you were, you were looking to actually stop? Yeah, it, it, it wasn't too smooth but I think being through those hardships, that makes me appreciate the position I'm in a lot more. When I'm stood on the start line, I'm absolutely blessed to be there and I'm lucky to be in the position I am, so it makes me appreciate more, it makes me more mentally tough and it's helped me a lot. Over the junior years, I was one of the top juniors in Europe, I was running really good, but then going into the seniors, I had a lot of big injuries trying to adapt to a full-time training programme and then I started to come into my own in 2014 when I had the full support and. I had the setup to train as a full-time athlete and then I, I kind of broke through from there. So there's still a lot more to come, I think, and I'm just enjoying the life that I'm living at the moment, traveling the world, racing the best guys in the world, winning medals. It's, a, it's, it's my dream and I'm, I just don't want to end, so I've got to keep on, keep on the ball and keep working hard if I, if I want to keep living this life. And you also mentioned before that you do quite a bit, when you're back at home in Gateshead, you do a bit of barefoot running on the beach? Yeah, I do. A place called Saltburn, me and Chris Tomlinson, he's my training partner when I'm home, the long jumper. And I like a little bit of that old school Rocky type training, you know, it, it make, makes me tough, that's what type of person I am. So I, I, I like to go back home and back to my roots and get on the beach, strengthen my feet up. And it's difficult running on the, on the sand, you, you slip a little bit, but it makes you strong, it makes you fit and mentally tough. And then we even get a quick 10 minute ice bath in the sea afterwards as well to toughen us up even a little bit more and help us recover. So it's all good, yeah. And uh, I assume you're becoming a bit of a celebrity as well at home? What's that? Yeah, when I'm home, everybody, every time I'm in the, the shopping centres, I'm in Tesco or Asda or something, everyone always wants to stop me and ask for photos and stuff. And it's really humbling the fact that the people of my hometown accept me as like a, a bit of a hero now and I'm being introduced into my town's Hall of Fame alongside the guy who invented the first passenger steam train, the guy who invented the match, so to be in there, you know, in the town that I grew up in, the Hall of Fame and have the freedom of the borough, it's absolutely amazing, I can't believe it, yeah. Well, we can't wait to see you race again. I mean, yeah, hopefully it's, you'll see a, a, lot more, a lot more of me. And we wish you all the best for Beijing and obviously yeah. Rio. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.